inga mana, inga reo, inga iwi e puta noa, piki mai, kake mai, no mai, haere mai. Haere mai ki te whara karake o hato hoepa o kaitaia. Nō reira, i runga anō i te reo karanga, te reo pōhuri, piki mai, kake mai, no mai, haere mai. Greetings and welcome to St. Joseph's Parish, Kaitaia, from the Catholic Diocese of Auckland, Aotearoa. Today, we celebrate the 15th Sunday of Ordinary Time. We have great pleasure in welcoming Bishop Michael Geelan to Te Tai Tokarau as he celebrates his first Mass as a bishop in this very historic area in our New Zealand faith history. Bishop Michael, welcome, welcome, thrice welcome. I now invite you all and those watching at home to please stand and join together to sing our gathering hymn. Thank you so much for that warm welcome. It's wonderful to be here for my first visit uh, to Kaitai, or my first official visit as the um, baby bishop of the Auckland Diocese. It's good to be with our children and teachers from Pompalia School and from our parish, St. Joseph's, and to be with our people from uh, joining with us on this Sunday. Uh, from around the country on Shine TV. We begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's wonderful. You joined in well there. Peace be with you and with your spirit. As we begin Mass, we remind ourselves of the wonderful God we have, the incredible loving Father we have, who wants us to join with him in our fullness and so let us place before our god our hearts and our need for his mercy lord have mercy lord have mercy christ have mercy rise Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, 
we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, man of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Kenoitato, let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son has raised up a fallen world, fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. First reading, a reading from the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens and do not return without watering the earth, making it yield and giving growth to provide seed for the sower and the bread for the eating. So the word that, the word that goes from my mouth does not return to me empty, without crying, without carrying out my will in succeeding, in what it was sent to do. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
Uh, Second reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I think that what we suffer in this life can never be compared to the glory, as yet unrevealed, which is waiting for us. The whole creation is eagerly waiting for God to reveal his sons. It was not for any fault on the part of creation that it was made unable to attain its purpose. It was made so by God, but creation still retains the hope of being freed, like us, from its slavery to decadence, to enjoy the same freedom and glory as the children of God. From the beginning till now, the entire creation as we know has been groaning in one great act of giving birth, and not only creation, but all of us who possess the first fruits of the Spirit. We too groan inwardly as we wait for our bodies to be set free. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus left the house and sat by the lakeside. But such great crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there. The people still all stood on the beach, and he told them many things and parables. He said to them, Imagine a sower going out to sow. As he sowed, some seeds fell on the edge of the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Others fell on patches of rock where they found little soil, sprang up straight away because there was no depth of earth. But as soon as the sun came up, they were scorched, and not having any roots, they withered away. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Others fell in rich soil and produced their crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, anyone who has ears. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was one of the most amazing storytellers ever. Who likes a good story? Who likes a good story amongst us? Me too. And my, my grandfather, he could tell awesome stories. My grandfather, he was a Dutchman. He was, um, his name was Upper. We called him Upper. And you know how you can tell Dutch people? They're tall. They're really tall. So it's easy to see I'm Dutch, isn't it? Because you can see I'm really tall, can't you? Unfortunately, I followed my mother, who's really short. Anyway, that's another story. And so Jesus would use stories to explain really important things to people. And we know his stories worked. You know how we know his stories worked? Because we're still telling them. We're still listening to his stories. And you've just done that today. His stories were parables, analogies, examples from his time. And today we've just heard an amazing story about A person who went out and sowed seeds to bring forth a crop, a harvest. It's really appropriate we think about this story in this week, isn't it? Because we've had heaps of rain and rain and rain. I thought you had a drought up here. Someone told me you did. Maybe one person said to me, Bishop, you're the drought breaker. So maybe I should come up next summer when it's too dry again and we can... uh, Pray for some more rain. Jesus told the people the story. Why do you think he told them the story? He told them the story about the, the, the sower who sowed the seeds because that's what they did. The people in Jesus' time, 
the most important thing they could do was sow a crop so that they could reap the harvest, the food that they needed to survive. If they didn't get a harvest, what happened? Good girl. They would run out of food. They'd go hungry. So it's really important. And so when he started talking to them about a harvest and seeds and a crop and sowing, and they listened. Because I thought, we really want to understand this. It's really important to understand this. I hear that uh, Kaitaia is famous for your produce, for your fruit, and for your veggies. Is that true? Oh, maybe it's not true. Is it true? Yeah. Ah, it is true. I come from a place called Tokoroa. So if we plant stuff up there, really quickly it dies because the frosts will get it. Or there'll be too much rain. What we do grow really well up there is pine trees. You know about pine trees, don't you? Something that grows really well here is pumpkins, I hear. You get really massive pumpkins. So I asked Father Larry this morning, and I got a pumpkin seed. I've got it right here, tiny little green seed. And I wanted to bring this along for you so we could talk a little bit about this seed. Because this seed reminds us of the seed of faith. And that's what Jesus was saying. When he was telling that story, he wasn't saying, he wasn't trying to teach them how to plant their crops. He was teaching them about a deeper reality, a deeper story. And that's about the story of faith. A lot of our people at home are listening now, and they're not children anymore. Some of them are a lot older. But we need to hear these stories again and again to remind us how important it is to look after our seeds. What do you have to do? If you want to grow a pumpkin, what do you need to do first? You need to get the seed, don't you? And then what do you need to do with it? Dig a hole, that's right. You really do know how to do these things. And then what? You put water on it or you just leave it outside if it's like the rain like here, eh? Yeah? And then what needs to happen? It'll form a root and it'll grow properly. That's exactly what needs to happen. We'll stop now because you guys are starting to get too far away beyond me. I only know the real basics about how do you grow plants. And then the sun's going to shine, it, shine on it, doesn't it? But what's important is that everything that a pumpkin needs is right here in this tiny little seed. Do you know something I read last week, which is amazing? Seeds are so powerful that once they found a seed that was planted with one of the pharaohs, or left with one of the pharaohs. They used to give the, the, they used to give the produce with the pharaohs from Egypt. You heard of them, the Egyptian pharaohs, you know where the pyramids are? And they would leave seeds there, the produce for the afterlife. And one of them took one of these seeds, it was 5,000 years old, put it in the ground, put water on it, and it produced it grew and produced fruit after, after 5,000 years. That's how incredible seeds are. They just waited until the right environment was provided for it to grow. So what Jesus was telling his listeners, and we're the listeners today, Jesus' words been given us, is that he's given us everything we need in the faith that he gives us. And we get our faith from our Lord, from God. And we hear it at school, we hear it in our uh, stories we're told, in the parables and in the gospel. But most important, we receive it from our family. Amen? amen. When you, that's when you say you want to agree, you say amen. amen. You say amen, P. Hopper, amen, Bishop, preach it. You don't want to say that, do you? That's some, some other churches do that. Anyway, so we put the seed, we nourish it, and then it grows into produce. And that's what Jesus wants to happen in our hearts. But it's really important we do what? Can we just leave it there? It's really important we look after it, isn't it? And that's the same with our faith. If you just go to school and, or at home, if we just go to Mass every Sunday and we don't nourish our faith, it won't produce anything. It'll just stay, like Jesus said, on the side of the road and remain dormant. We've got to work on it. It's like everything in life. And Jesus wants us to do that. And do you know something? When we do that, others are able to enjoy it. So who here has had pumpkin soup before? Who's had pumpkin pie? 
If you haven't asked your mums for it, it's amazing, really nice. Pumpkin pie. And do you know something pumpkins produce? What do they produce? More seeds. I put one in the ground, and how many seeds does a pumpkin produce? I wouldn't have a clue, and neither would you. So, But that's your first... That's your first challenge when you go home, when you go back to school, I want you to find out with your teachers how many seeds a pumpkin produces. And that's the same with us. If we nourish our faith, like, see, look at the back here, these wonderful people at the back. These are our komatoa. These are kuya. These are the people who, like your grandmothers and grandfathers and your mums and dads, who have given you, look, guys, look at back up here again. They've given you faith. And if you look after it, you will help others have faith. In who? Jesus. And that's why you're sitting here now. 2,000 years after he told that story, you're hearing it. And if you nourish it, say your prayers, come to Mass and love Jesus, you'll produce many more people who will know it. And it's the most important thing you can have, the most beautiful thing you can have. If someone asked me what's the most precious thing you have, I would say my faith in Jesus, my, my Catholic faith. It's given me the greatest joy, the deepest hope, and the best fruit I could ever imagine. And you can have that too if you nourish it. Now, what I'm going to do afterwards, because I'm such a generous um, bishop, is I'm going to give you all one of these each. <laughs> afterwards, if you're good, you take it home, or you can eat it, actually. You can actually eat pumpkin seeds. Or you plant it. I don't, mostly not a good time to plant it at the moment in the middle of winter. Okay? Remember that. Jesus told us the story because he wants to be planted where? In our heart. That's the only place he wants to go. Thank you to our elders, to our komatoa, to our kuya, to those parishioners, to mums and dads who have passed into the faith, and to our mums and dads and grandmas and grandpas at home. Please keep watering our faith, especially your own. Please keep giving us a good example. We need it. So we're going to stand together now. And we're going to profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life of the everlasting. So our God loves us so much that he wants us to have faith and he's given us everything we can for it. And so now we have the courage to lay our prayers before him. Let us pray for our church. May our church continue to be like the rich soil where the word of God is planted, cultivated and bearing much fruit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for Bishop Patrick, Bishop Michael, and all the Catholic bishops of New Zealand, that like the generous farmer, may they continue to scatter the seeds of faith in all our land. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our communities, especially our community here in Kaitaia. May we always acknowledge the generosity of God even in the face of social economic challenges. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and the dying. May the word of God give them comfort and provide them with hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
We join all our prayers in the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, who is one God, with the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the word of the sinner's sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all this holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and flat powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal sacrifice, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Patrick, our Bishop, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe more distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with each other Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not ready that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So this mitre was given to me by Bishop Pat. I'm lucky, aren't I, eh? And, it, and it, he's a lot taller than me, but he's got the same head as me, so that tells you something. <laughs> what I want you to do now, before we finish, is do something really special, is turn and look at the cameras, and I want you to say to the people back at home who are watching on TV, they're going to be watching on TV up at the back there, look at them all, and I want you to say to God bless together, God bless you, on the count of three. Tahi rua toru, God bless you. We pray that the Lord will bless you back at home, wherever you are, and whatever is going on in your life, the seed of faith may be planted in your hearts. Kia noho te ariki, kia koutou, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Kia whakapainga koutou, e te atua kaharawa, e te matua, e te tamaiti, e te wairua tapu. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.